What's up, everybody? It's me, Steve Tackett, here at Tackett's House of Horsepower. Where else would I be uh, on this beautiful weekend? The weather is amazing. A little warm, but it's it's definitely cooling off. We're into September, so it's we're back to great weather. Living in Phoenix, you know, there's a couple months where, yes, you want to kill yourself. It's that hot. But the other 10 months, 11 months, 9, 10 months, it's perfect weather and uh we're enjoying it right now so let me get you in here and uh get you caught up So today's going to be a real quick video, just basically like an update video, a catch you up type of video, kind of like a close out to all the other videos that we filmed up to this point, like uh, the brake line video and, uh, you know, electrical videos and like under the dash and stuff like that. Like there's been several videos that came out and they're filmed in chunks over several days sometimes and then there's editing and all that. So like a lot of that is spread out more than you think. Like I, I would love to put out a video every week, bing, 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 but it's difficult between filming and editing and working my full-time job and my beautiful wife doing this when she gets home from work at night. Love you, babe, thank you. Um, it's, it's a little difficult, but uh, the, anyway, so, I wanted to kind of catch you up. There's a, there's been like today has been busy, but it's just been little things I've been doing to finish up what was left over from those other videos. Does that make sense? I don't, I hope that makes sense. Anyways, let's take a look. We'll start with the brakes, I guess. Um, I was uh, I got down to the one last fitting in that video, the brake video, and uh, <laughs> I ended up getting. I did have a coupler. So I, what I did was I remade this brake line and I got a reducer for this up here that I had in my drawer. So I just remade this brake line and uh, to the same size as the rear brake line. So I just used a coupler that I had and a reducer that uh, I had. So I remade that brake line and uh, ta-da, I was able to finish the brake system without going to the store, like I said. So I did, it was a success. I did I did finish that up. So I gotta say, it came out okay. All the uh, brake system is done and ready to go. It just needs to be bled now. Um, and uh, basically the only thing I had to buy new was uh, the CPP stuff, uh, everything else I had. So again, down a dirty theme, <laughs> you know, just uh, using what I got, basically, and, and keeping this real simple and cheap as possible, basically. So uh, that's uh, kind of wrapped up the, the brake line video. Okay, earlier today, I made some, uh, I made some uh, coil wires. I had to make two, remember, because everything's on the inside and you got the pass through up here. So I had to make a, break, a, a couple of uh, coil wires. And in the last video, somebody caught it. I just ran all the distributor wires down the back and they were just kind of hanging there. And somebody commented, hey, those wires are awful close to your header. <laughs> and I was like, man, you guys don't miss nothing. You guys are really watching these videos or you're watching them on your big screen TVs or something and not on your cell phones because some of you guys are catching stuff that I'm I'm really not trying to show, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, yeah, those wires don't go here. They uh, they uh, are nowhere near the header, and that down there, I added that today too. Uh, while we're while we're here, this is a metal line that goes to the uh, vacuum. I, I made this vacuum line, ran that down, and hooks up to the transmission down there. It is kind of close to the header, so I don't know. I hope that rubber piece survives but yes there is no wires here <laughs> they uh they poke through the firewall there and i used to have the filter the uh, electronic filter was kind of glued to the firewall right here so 
I need to scrape all this off because I moved it over to there. I punched a hole there to run the distributor wires that are not hanging by the header anymore. <laughs> good eye, good eye. I'll give you that. This is a good eye. I'll show you what I did. If you come around here. Back to where we were in the last video. They poke through right there and they come in. So I got my ignition, ignition 12 volts and my, my signal from the distributor and it's grounded. The only wire I need to run is, uh, I poked a hole right here. Remember, I'm gonna run my 12 volts. That's gonna be probably off of the starter lug, I think, the big battery cable on the starter lug. will probably come through there in a pretty large gauge, 12 volt constant, needs to go to here. So that's that. Those are where those wires actually go, not, not by the header. And uh, I made that coil wire. So that up there is done. So the ignition system is actually finished now from uh, what you saw in the last video. There it is. So that tidied up the ignition system. The uh, basically, the ignition box, the coil, the distributor, all that, everything under there, everything is hooked up. So that's done, except for the one power wire, that, that's finished. Then today I moved on to fuel system and uh, I'm running a stock tank. Or I'm going to run a stock tank, I don't have it yet. So I ran this to the metal line, put a fitting on it, ran that to the pump, all dash six. And then I ran this up and over. I, I don't like the way it sits kind of out here in the out here in the open. But I had to put the alternator on this side of the car because the power steering's on that side, I guess. I don't know. So I'm not crazy about how it's routed, but it's good enough-ish, I guess. It's out of the way, it's not gonna get hot. I thought about running it behind the alternator, like through there but it was like super pinched and like it was gonna rub on it. So I don't want that. Remember this car has to drive long distances. So I can't have that thing rubbing on anything. So I'm gonna run it on the outside of the alternator. Yeah, it's kind of ugly, but whatever. And again, I used basically stuff that I had. That's all parts and stuff and pieces I have laid around from other builds. So I didn't have to really spend any money on the fuel system yet. I will get a stock tank and sending unit, three eighths sending unit, and I'll run three eighths metal line up to the up to the front, and then everything from here forward is going to be dash six. So that should be plenty for now for this engine and uh, this current configuration. Um, again, I I've talked about this in other videos, and uh, I think that down and dirty is going to be my kind of my beater cruiser race car slash you know make noise when i want have fun with it don't have to worry about keeping it garaged and clean and all that and i i want to get into some of the uh like uh the drive and drag type events if you ever if you ever if you're on youtube obviously type in crusty nova you know something like that i i see this as being like kind of a beater but you know we'll keep adding to it and adding to it you know until it gets faster and faster and faster and uh overdrive tranny i'm thinking maybe future ls swap turbo with overdrive 4l80 maybe that's the next configuration but I had this engine and transmission sitting under the bench over here. The transmission was sitting underneath those pile of headers and the engine was sitting on that engine stand for years. So I just bolted it in and set it in the car because it's what I have, you know? So I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be sorta of fast, but it's not gonna be like, it's not gonna be like, nine second fast it's going to be like 12 second fast but hopefully cruisable 
you know, long distance driving. That's the kind of the name of the game. So anyways, like I said, I, I started on fuel lines a, a little bit ago and then I took the carburetor off because I'm like, well, the engine has been sitting a while, so I better check out the carburetor. I talked about this engine in the uh, 383 video. I built this for a, a buddy of mine, John, and he he was gonna put it in a Camaro and he ended up selling the car. So I ended up buying the engine back from him. So I didn't really have a use for it, but I knew it was a good engine and it had a lot of good parts in it. Kind of a mild build. It wasn't supposed to be a drag car. It was supposed to be a cruiser for him. And so I ended up with it and I, I was gonna put it in the blue car, the blue station wagon, but I didn't. And it ended up sitting here and sitting here and sitting here on that test on the engine stand for a long time. I put it on the test stand once and I ran it to make sure it, it had good oil pressure and stuff. Whenever I build an engine for somebody, I like to put it on the test stand and run it and make sure it's got oil pressure and, and nothing's clanging and banging. And, and I like to run it and break in the cam and, and make sure everything's good. Tune the carburetor, set the timing. And I did all that in a, in a, in a, in a video a long time ago, babe, babe, if you're watching this, she's doing the editing. So if you could please put in the video of the test stand of the 383, I know, I know it's, a, it's an old video. It's, it's filmed the wrong direction. I know, I know. Just please put it in right here. And that way they can see that it, it was a good running engine until I put it on the test. It goes with the conversation. Just please do it. Thank you. See it? You got it? Thanks. Thank you, babe. She's the editor, so she handles all that kind of stuff. I don't do that stuff. So thank you, babe. Appreciate it. But there you go. So the engine ran and then it sat a long time, like four years, five years, something like that. I don't, it was a long time. So here we are, we're gonna put it in the car and we're gonna use it. And so today I was doing fuel lines and stuff and I went ahead and pulled the carburetor and carburetors don't like to sit. I covered that in another video too, a Holly carburetor video. And uh, let me show you why. I put some stickers up. I've got literally drawers full of stickers. <laughs> but here we go, here's the, the carburetor table. Don't mind the shift light. I, I might, I found that in this cabinet. And uh, when I was digging out ignition boxes and stuff, and uh, I was like, hey, maybe a shift light. I might need that. So I pulled it out. Anyways, this is the carburetor table and uh, carburetor rebuild kits and all that up in there. But uh, okay, check it out. Here's what happens when a carburetor sits. Even though this was a brand new car, listen, listen. Yeah, it's done. So, accelerator pump diaphragms, pr 
probably a power valve. I think there's a power valve still in the front on this carburetor. I think the rear might be blocked off. I'm not positive. I don't remember. It was years ago when I put this together. But anyways, yeah, we need to go through this. I need to make sure anything rubber is going to need to be replaced. Probably needles, accelerator pumps, um, possibly a power valve, at least one. So, yeah, even though it's a brand new carburetor, I ran fuel through it and then I let it sit. And so this is my fault. This is what happens. So it was a good running carburetor, as you saw in the video. It's pretty responsive. But especially for only 9 to 1 compression, you know, small hydraulic roller cam, that engine is pretty snappy. So I'm hoping it, it does all right. But I'm going to have to clean this up and go through it. And... Uh, I mean, I talked about it in a video for this. Speaking of this, there's a video where I was going to put this on Oki. And uh, I rebuilt the carburetor, like you saw in one of those videos. And uh, so this is a fresh rebuilt carburetor. And then I, I pulled Oki up in here. I moved everything out. I pulled Oki up in here, got my camera all set and ready to go. I was going to film it. I was going to install this. And uh, I started doing it. Even got a new thermostat and everything ready to go. And then I noticed something. This intake manifold is new-ish. And it doesn't have the hole right here for the breather tube. And that's a problem on Oki because Oki has the original 283 in it. And the original 283 has the old script valve covers and there's no breather holes and no PCV valves or nothing. The, those old valve covers don't have any holes in them. And the intake manifold has the tube in it with the breather on it. So I need another intake manifold. Holly, Holly non-EGR with a tube hole. <laughs> so I'm on the lookout for one of them. Maybe I'll see it at the swap meet or something and pick one up for cheap. And then I can uh, put this on uh, Oki because that original little two barrel Rochester thing is just, it's not responsive at all. So I am going to put that on Oki probably eventually, hopefully, I don't know, but not with that intake manifold. I can't. So that's on hold if you're if you're watching the channel that's an update on that guy so carburetor for down and dirty future carburetor setup for oki yeah that's where we're at all right so there's kind of a catch you up uh you know like an update on uh, all the previous videos if you've been watching them in order i don't know if you have or not i don't know you could go back and watch them if you want you don't, they don't have to go in order it's, it's up to you if you want to, but that car is getting, it's getting as much, as much time and attention as I can put on it, you know, and still hold down a full-time job and stay employed. So today is the 17th. Yeah. The 17th, I think. Yes, it is the 17th. So I've got like two weeks to get this car on the trailer two duct tape drags. I don't know if it's going to make it. I know, I know, I know. It hurts me to say that, but it might not make it. And if it doesn't, there's the green one. I mean, we could, we could take the green one. If not, we could take maybe Oki. I don't know. Maybe. Oki is the 65 wagon that's from Oklahoma. It's like really original. Um, go back to the 283 videos. If you scroll way back to the early videos, the 283 build, that was Oki's engine. And uh, so, I mean, we could take Oki out there. And I think Oki fits the theme of duct tape drags better. And so I, I kind of want to take Oki and, um, you know, I think... It would be the slowest car there. I, I don't know. I'll have to ask Freiburger, if I see a Freiburger, if they have an award for the slowest car, maybe. I think Oki might get it, uh, maybe. 
we'll, we'll ask him if I see him, we'll ask him. But um, uh, I don't know. I, I'm thinking it might be Oki. It might be the green Chevelle. Maybe both. Maybe we take both. What do you think? I, ask Sarah. Sarah, can we can we take both cars? Just Oki? I don't. You you tell me. I don't. I just do what I'm told. Okay. So it's up to Sarah. We maybe we take that one. At least Oki. I think we'll take Oki for sure. I don't know. But anyway, that's where we're at, and we're still going on it. I'm trying everything I can. Parts are on order. It's been taking time to get those parts lately. Things are kind of slow. I don't, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. So if the parts get here in time and uh, I don't, I don't get fired from my job, then um, maybe down and dirty will be there. We're going to try, but um, as always, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, hit the bell, comment. I like the comments. You guys are you guys are cool, man. I appreciate the, any kind of comment. I try to respond to all of you, and uh, you know I do I do read them. I do like it. It's me that's doing the typing with my fat thumbs. So uh, if you if you do comment, it'll be I'll be responding. But uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support. And uh, if you're if you're it's if it gets towards the end of September and you're bored and you happen to be near Tucson, come on down to Duct Tape Drags. It's gonna be fun. There's gonna be a bunch of us there, a lot of cool cars hanging out. There's gonna be you know, just just look it up. Look up Duct Tape Drags. Look it up there with your computer there, and uh, you'll see it's pretty cool. But uh, anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you. See you next time. Appreciate you. Love you. Bye.